What's going on, everybody? My name is Ben, and welcome back to the bench for our final episode here on the F9F8P Photo Cougar. Today, we are pushing forward, and well, we're going to get this kit all wrapped up and finish off the recon group build. So let's go ahead and dive right on in. Now, last time, I went ahead and overcoated the entire aircraft with Future. Then I went ahead and decaled it, gave it a top coat of Future to seal everything in. I think it looks great. I love it. The decals went on nicely. We have to come back today, though, add in some brake lines. I want to go ahead and do a little bit of work on maybe some weathering. Not really sure how much I want to weather this down, but I should do some form of weathering. We also have to go ahead and attach this side door. We're going to have it open so we can see all the detail on the inside. And once that's kind of tacked into place, we can come back and maybe add in the canopy and get that rear decking in place as well. So lots to do, not as much as we've had, but lots to do still. So let's go ahead and just dive right on in. Let's talk a little bit about weathering. Now I'm actually anticipating using some AK panel line washes. I've got one for white and I've got one for gray and blue. And I think that should be enough to go ahead and get this kind of wrapped up. Now looking through my references, I am actually very surprised to find that most of the Cougars are pretty clean. They might have a little bit of streaking here and there, just a little bit of dirt, but the majority of the pictures here in in this reference book show that the cougars are actually fairly well maintained and I'm happy about that because that means less work for me and I don't really think I'm that good at weathering. Again we're just going to go ahead and try to keep it a little bit on the cleaner side and that should be easy enough to do. I'm going to be using some AK panel liners. We're going to have one for white and then one for the gray. We'll wipe them down with some odorless spirits and I think we should be good to go. Most of the images here in the book, they are actually pretty clean. And this is why I like having a reference material that I can look back and refer to, because it actually shows you a lot of very good information. And the fact that I actually have a picture of the airplane that I'm building right here, that's even better. Shows me that this is actually still a pretty clean aircraft, but that doesn't mean I don't want to do some form of weathering. Now, looking back through all the references, we can see that yes, the Cougars were pretty clean, but every once in a while you see a couple of images that have some sort of like streaking and staining that appears on the lower portion of the fuselage and the wing. So I'm going to go ahead and try to replicate that, use some oils. I'm just going to have to kind of streak it and try to see if I can blend it together to get a little bit of staining. So I'm going to go ahead and add in this kind of feeling. It may not go this heavy though, but I think if we can grab some oils and just kind of streak a little bit of that grime and dirt coming back off of the air brakes, right around here, streaking back, and then of course along the wheelbase and streaking back around these flaps. That should be perfect. So let's go ahead and jump into our first time lapse. I want to go ahead and get this thing nicely weathered up. Let's give it a shot.
Well, all right, everybody. So we are back. And as you can see, I have added in a little bit of that streaking weathering, not too much. I wanted to keep it a little bit on the cleaner side, but I did want to add in some of this grime coming back from the gear bays and also from the air brake wells. I have this more or less where I want it. So now I'm going to go ahead and add in some brake lines. Now I was originally not going to add any brake lines because I couldn't find a good picture of them. But then there's a very tiny little image in my reference that does actually show a side profile of the brake lines and the outer door of the wheels. So what we're going to go ahead and do is try our best to replicate what I see in the picture. And it looks like there's actually two brake lines come down along the main portion of the landing gear and then kind of wrap itself out and around. So to do that, I'm going to use a tried and true 0.3 millimeter solder and glue them onto the hub and onto the brake calipers. Now to go ahead and get that nice curve that you see in the images, I'm going to be using a piece of sprue and that's going to help me shape the brake lines into a nice pattern. Once I have that bent to where I need it, I'll take my flush cuts, I'll clip off the excess, then take my super glue and just go ahead and tack down each wire. Now I typically don't really add a lot of brake cables to my models. I might actually want to start doing that because it does add a little bit of character, a little bit of life to the model itself. I rather like it. I think it's a pretty easy addition. Now of course, as I said, the Cougar tends to have what looks like two brake cables per main gear. Gear. So I'm going to go ahead and add in one more piece of 0.3 millimeter solder. We're going to tack it down to the bottom of the wheel bay. Then I'll just go ahead and work my way up to that wheel and just make sure that everything is nicely glued in place. Once I kind of get an idea where I want that, I'll go ahead and bend it and then I'll cut the end of it off and I'll tack it down to the next area. That should be pretty simple to do. Let's go ahead and make sure that is nicely tacked in place. We'll bend it down to the shape, tack it down to the wheel hub, see what other troubles we can get into. Now with the brake lines all nicely in place, as you can see, I actually used my fine paintbrush and painted those a flat black. And hopefully you can see them here. There's two on each of the main gears. There we go. And yeah, that actually adds quite a bit of character. So I'm happy with it. I think it's really, really awesome. Plus the weathering that I've been doing with the panel liners and all the streaking oils. I think it looks kind of nice. I like it. Now to go ahead and make sure I sealed everything in, I went ahead and I overshot the model with a mixture of Future and Winsor Newton flat. That gives me a little bit of a satin finish. I didn't want to go really like bone flat, but I didn't want it to be too glossy either. So I decided to bring it down to kind of a satiny finish. I think it looks okay. It's not perfect. I should probably invest in a very nice, like out of the bottle satin finish instead of having to mix different elements, but that's okay. I'm happy with it so far. So now what I think we're going to go ahead and do is come back and we're going to unmask all of the clear parts. So that will actually be the windows there on the photo nose, both sides on the bottom as well, and then the canopy. We also have a couple of landing lights we've installed and that actually worked out pretty well. Just a real quick clear part that I just glued in with some white PVA glue. They aren't going to go anywhere and I painted over on the left side with red and on the right side with green. So that looks okay. I'm happy with it. Let's go ahead and pull off the rest of the masks, tack in that door, and see how we turned out. All right, everybody, we are back. And I got to tell you, we have finished our 148 scale F9F8P Photo Cougar. All the finishing touches are done. We've got our clear parts on. We've got everything tacked down. The photo nose is glued open. Let me go ahead and grab it, show you what we came up with. And here it is, 148 scale Kitty Hawk F9F8P Photo Cougar built up for the recon group build. And man, was that a build, guys, honestly. Now, I added in a little extra details here and there. I added in a wire to go from the back of the chair to the front of that little insert. I've glued open the door. We've got the refueling probe glued in there. We've got our landing lights. We've got our different nav lights. We have everything pretty much where we want it. So I'm pretty happy with that. So you can see from the underside, we do have everything weathered. Didn't do too crazy amounts of weathering, to be honest, but I did add a little bit. And I think that is perfect for what I see in the photos. Again, I'm very happy I have references. Now going ahead and giving you a close up here, you can see some of the detail there in the photo nose. We've got a little bit of detail in the cockpit. We added in that oxygen tube as well as the seat belts. And I added in one wire going from the back of the seat to the front of that little insert for the canopy. Got our canopy nicely tacked in place with PVA glue. So that's good. Windows all nicely tacked into place. Our refueling probe in place as well. We have our clear lights up on top of the fuselage and in the wing root areas, as well as our painted lights on the very end of the wing. So I like how this has turned out so far. We did add our brake cables. Hopefully you can see those in place. Painted them black as I see in my references and everything else. Well, yeah, we're pretty much good to go. We do have one nav light underneath the aircraft. I kept that clear. Didn't really want to paint it, even though they tell you to paint it red. I also installed our pilot step in the correct orientation. They wanted it actually flipped backwards. So I righted it and glued it in place. 
As you saw from a couple episodes ago, we did add in kind of a makeshift lens right here on that little angled piece that sits right in front of the landing gear. It's actually supposed to be a camera, but right now it's just gloss black. It's fine, whatever. We've got our landing step, like I mentioned, in the correct orientation. They actually wanted it flipped, pointing backwards. We've got pretty much everything in place, so yeah, I'm happy with it. Along with that streaking that I did, I think, honestly, it gives you the impression that this is a used aircraft, but not overly used or abused. Adding in these little extra touches like the spooled wire there in the back of the canopy, I think that adds quite a bit of character and kind of brings the model to life. So I love adding those very small details. Now, of course, the big question is, would I build another one? And honestly, I would have to say yes, I would. And maybe I'm just a glutton for punishment, I don't know. But I really like the Cougar. I love Cold War jets, and this is one of those quintessential Cold War fighters, one of my favorite aircraft. So yeah, I would build another one. In fact, I will eventually, because I do have another 148 scale Kitty Hawk Cougar in the stash that I intended on building for the gun version. So I'm not out of the woods yet, but I'm going to go ahead and hold off. I'm not going to jump into another Kitty Hawk kit for some time. But anyway, guys, that is it for us today. Thank you so so much for joining me here on the finale for the F9F8P Photo Cougar for the Recon Group Build. Even though it was challenging, I had a lot of fun with this kit. I'm hoping you guys enjoyed the entire process. We're going to go ahead and figure out what we might want to build. we got to jump back on that D520. I've got another sci-fi kit that I'm really itching to get on. A lot of fun stuff coming up. A lot of fun kits to build. Until our next episode, you guys know the drill. Go out there, get yourself some bench time, have some fun, build something cool. And we'll see you back here on the next episode of Ben Builds. Thanks so much, everybody. Take care. We'll see you soon.